Hey everyone, it's Tristan. This is Step Back. This is Quick Step. Holy moly. Another one of these already? So a lot of Americans seem to think of Canada as like this liberal paradise. You know, the free healthcare, the clean cities, the happy people, the regularly getting on the top of the happiness index, all that kind of stuff makes you think that Canada is just some sort of magical paradise where nothing bad happens. The, the thing that I'm going to tell you though is that that's no, no, that's, that's an untruth. Yeah, Canada is just as bad as every other country, if not in some ways, much, much worse. I mean, I'm not gonna downplay free healthcare is pretty nice. It'd be nice if I didn't have to pay to go to the dentist or see a psychiatrist, but hey, uh, everyone decided to vote for Doug Ford instead. What I wanna talk about today is a recent news story that involves a group, a tribe of indigenous Canadians called the Wet'suwet'en, and why it's a perfect confluence of everything that I hate about this country. So let's start with the news story as we always do. The Wet'suwet'en is a kind of umbrella land uh, that belongs to several tribes in the interior of British Columbia, but also it's the name of one of the tribes within that region. And one of the recent developments is that there's going to be a natural gas pipeline built through their territory. Sound familiar yet? It got approved by the elected band councils, but not approved by the hereditary chiefs. We'll get more into that later. And the hereditary chiefs sparked a protest, a occupation of their own territory against the construction of this natural gas pipeline, in which the RCMP responded with basically militarized police force in order to force them off their own territory in order to push for uh, a natural gas pipeline. The occupations continued, there were sympathy protests around the country, around the world even, and eventually there was an agreement, a sort of truce made for now, where surveyors are allowed to move forward, but the pipeline is still uh, not being built through their land. So victory for the Wet'suwet'en. The problem is that Justin Trudeau, the prime minister of our country, has responded basically with just incomprehensible word salad, and when he's not completely dodging their questions, he is reinforcing that this pipeline is going to be built. And also, while the Wet'suwet'en uh, sympathy protests are happening around the country, another group, uh, you know, these yellow jacket people, unfortunately, it seems that in Canada, this jacket has uh, been fully taken over by the Nazis. A group of, well, let's just say white Albertans are complaining that Justin Trudeau isn't overtly converting the entire Canadian economy just to service Alberta's oil economy. Uh, they are very mad that these uppity indigenous people just are not letting them build their gas pipeline through their ancestral territory. So yeah, you can imagine there's a lot to unpack. So let's talk about three major factors for the reason why this story just fully shows why I hate Canada. Number one, our suicidal obsession with fossil fuel. Canada probably, if you just made an assumption based on other things, you would say that Canada is probably some forward thinking country on climate change, but that is extremely far from the truth. I'm so, so mad at how uh, basically pro fossil fuel jerks have appropriated this symbol. Uh, there was so much promise. Oh, I'm gonna have to take it down, aren't I? But yes, uh, a few of our provinces, basically Alberta for the most part, but also to a lesser extent Saskatchewan and potentially in the future uh, more in Newfoundland, Canada produces oil. And for a long time, Alberta, Alberta's government specifically, has been laser focused on basically giving itself Dutch disease by completely basing its entire economy off of petroleum. This isn't like stuff that you mine out of the ground. This is something called bitumen, which is like this tarry sand. It used to be called tar sands, but that's uh, politically incorrect to the right wing of our country. So they have to be called oil sands. And this oil is possibly some of the most environmentally destructive to harvest and also uh, some of the most expensive 
per liter oil to manufacture. It is basically removing oil from sand. Every liter of gasoline that comes out of it requires 10 liters of fresh water, something that we are desperately running out of in this planet, and on top of that creates these extremely toxic uh, ponds of basically contaminated water. It was profitable when oil was expensive, uh, then tanked when oil got cheap, and if oil ever becomes expensive again, they're preparing for uh, really doubling down on it. Unfortunately, Alberta really has no other industry, mostly because they haven't invested in any, and on top of that, uh, I think their industry beforehand was... cow? But uh, yeah, I'm getting sidetracked. I really despise how multiple Canadian governments, both the Liberals and the Conservatives, have dedicated so much of their resources to making Albertans happy because they are possibly the most fragile, entitled children of a province in this entire country. They basically freak out whenever any federal government is not doing everything in its power to just give them what they want in every single case because they make oil. Even the NDP government of Alberta, the, you know, supposedly social democratic wing of Alberta, which is now in government, is still just over the top in bank with oil money. Now, no Canadian politician denies that climate change is a thing. That's not really anywhere outside of the United States really a thing that people do but they just doubled down on not caring. So while Stephen Harper up until 2011 was fully, basically he was just a oil lobbyist masquerading as prime minister, uh, Justin Trudeau hasn't been that much different. You know that Keystone XL pipeline that was being built through North Dakota that uh, the water protectors were defending against and eventually it got sort of killed on the vine? Well, that was going to Canada and Canada's got like at least three of them on the go right now. And even though Justin Trudeau is basically doing anything, including, you know, completely going back on every campaign promise he ever made about the environment or relations with indigenous people to satisfy Alberta and its oil interests, there are still yellow jacket protesters, caravans going through uh, parts of the prairies and just all sorts of angry right-wing people who are freaking out that Justin Trudeau isn't doing enough to satisfy their lust for destroying the entire planet in order to create a few jobs for a set amount of time. As you can imagine, this makes me very, very, very upset. Canada is actually one of the most environmentally destructive countries on the planet. I think per capita, we are the most environmentally destructive people on the planet. And yet, because of a wheezing gas bag down in the United States, uh, we don't seem any pressure to, you know, live up to the things that we say. We're signatories to the Paris Climate Agreement, we just don't do anything about it. Number two is fake wokeness. Canada gets sold as this place where racism isn't a thing, where the past is over and that we live in this multicultural utopia. Now, while I am very proud that Canada has decided to make multiculturalism a core part of their identity and that I live in Toronto, which is the most multicultural city on earth, uh, Canada is very far from woke. I mean, let's just take the most recent example here in Toronto, where in the mayoral election, uh, Faith Goldie, the far-right Nazi internet personality, ran for mayor and got 30,000 votes. But, you know, Faith Goldie's, that's just flat out like the far right, that's Nazis, you know, we're supposed to have laws saying they can't say anything, but nobody enforces them anymore, so whatever. Anyways, uh, our Prime Minister sells himself as the most wokest of the Prime Ministers and t called himself a feminist, kicked out any uh, liberals in caucus who were anti-abortion. There weren't that many and none of them had any power, but okay, I like the idea behind it. And every time he's questioned about him bulldozing indigenous territory in order to build a gas pipeline, he talks very whimsically about how indigenous people have gotten a raw deal for a lot of Canadian history 
and that we need to do something about it. However, this prime minister is very much in the service of capital, not in the service of his people, and so all of his wokeness and progressive ideas basically get sidelined in order to make money. This is the prime minister who considers himself a feminist, but approved a trade deal with Saudi Arabia to sell them weapons in order to commit a genocidal war against the Yemeni people. Saudi Arabia, a country that executes women and until very recently didn't allow them to drive, uh, under strict Wahhabist conservative Islamic ideas, Saudi Arabia has to be one of the most misogynistic regimes on the planet, and yet uh, Justin Trudeau, perfectly fine making money with them. That is until he pissed them off a little while back by slightly criticizing them. Uh, one of the things that Canada has been able to rely on for the last few decades is hiding behind America's coattails in order to uh, have more weight on the international stage. Now that basically everyone knows that Trump hates Justin Trudeau, uh, more countries are willing to screw with us and basically not care about our influence. Saudi Arabia being one of them, China is kind of messing with us right now. It's, it's a whole thing. That's a different story. Justin Trudeau also ran on trying to do electoral reform. We learned in the 2011 election when the party that got the majority of seats got slightly below 40% of the popular vote, that Canada's first past the post electoral system was not working. The Liberals and the NDP in the 2015 election both campaigned on removing first past the post as an electoral system. And in order to get Stephen Harper out of power, a lot of people, including myself, unfortunately, strategically voted for the Liberals in order to make the case that this was gonna be the last first past the post election, so it's the last undemocratic Canadian election. Let's just get a party that is against first past the post elected so that in 2019, we can have the first Canadian election that is actually democratic. But Canada's doing first past the post election still, so what happened? So the Liberals got elected with 40 some percent of the popular vote, and all of a sudden they were really, really uh, sheepish about making electoral reform. And Justin Trudeau announced pretty soon into his prime ministership that he's given up on the whole thing. So Canada basically has uh, one party that has less than half of the votes with 100% of the power. It's not like America where there's uh, a lot of checks and balances. Basically the Liberal Party can pass and do whatever it wants right now. And Justin Trudeau also campaigned on a platform of reconciliation with indigenous peoples and starting a new relationship that would be nation to nation and a lot more forward thinking and progressive. And now he's saying an oil pipeline is gonna be built through this territory. I don't care what the people say this needs to happen. This goes for the Liberal Party in general. Canada's only ever been governed by the Liberal Party or the Conservative Party. And the Liberals, the people who I've just talked about, are billed as quote unquote the left-wing party, while they are possibly center-right at the very most generous. So don't even get me started on the Conservatives who are basically just lobbyists for the oil industry. And very recently, uh, social conservatism's coming back in a big way. Homophobia, as happened in Ontario, is coming back. And uh, something like, a lot of social conservative positions were considered pretty uh, uncouth in conservative politics are starting to come back with a force. So, ah, conservative land's getting even worse. 2019 is gonna be such a dumb election. We do have a left of center party called the New Democratic Party of Canada. Uh, the problem with them is that they are basically allergic to winning elections. Anytime they come close to winning, they hard uh, tack towards the center and lose terribly. Uh, they're a party that is very much afraid of their own ideas and anytime they try to introduce a major shaker who will make the party move in a positive direction, uh, they never win in favor of like, you know, shifting weird centrists. They also definitely have some sort of consultant who basically tells them that they can't use any of their best ideas, that they have to be these smiling uh, people who are afraid of the best things on their platform, and it just results in them losing elections over and over and over again. And the third thing that I really hate about Canada, and I think this is the biggest one, uh, we are just awful towards our indigenous people. Canada regularly gets reprimanded by 
the United Nations and by Amnesty International for the way that we treat our indigenous people. Canada, much like the United States, was in a state of basically open genocide until a uh, sadly recent time. The indigenous people who have survived, they still have been subject to mistreatment, racism, and brutality. Even after the period of explicit genocide, Canada ran a residential school program with the explicit intent of destroying indigenous cultures. Uh, those ran until the 90s, so that's good. And then very recently it came out that there was still a actual genocide, a sterilization program on indigenous people that ended in 2017. A lot of our history with indigenous people is based on making agreements and treaties and then not honoring them and basically violating them at every single point. Uh, all of the best land in Canada where indigenous people used to live have been uh, basically taken by white people and indigenous people have been pushed to uh, hard to get to in remote regions of the country. Some live there beforehand, for example, the Inuit, but that also means that getting supplies to them is difficult. It's a logistical nightmare in order to go to places that don't have roads, go to places that only have roads when it's cold enough that the roads, that the rivers and stuff turn to ice and so you can drive trucks on them, things like that. Uh, there are suicide crises happening. There are indigenous communities that are on boil water advisories, which means that their water is so contaminated that they literally have to boil all of the water they use. And on top of that, every time indigenous territory is on top of, say, mineral deposits or in a place where they want to build an oil pipeline, every single time when they come into the region, uh, they will do anything to make sure that they can steal indigenous resources and make sure nothing gets to them. But on top of that, using the vague promise of jobs, uh, coerce them into giving up even what little parts of their sovereign territory they have left. And what do they use to do that? Well, here's the thing. This is I remember I told you about the disagreement between the elected band council and the hereditary chiefs. Well, the elected band councils were put in place by the Canadian government in 1871 and basically used to circumvent all of the indigenous tribes, um, like traditional governing structures in order to put on one that they could control, essentially. And in the case of the Wet'suwet'en people, this is leading to issues because their traditional government says one thing but the elected government says another, and the fight over jurisdiction is basically what's causing the disagreement. Uh, guess which one is the traditional government and which one is the one that was imposed by the quote-unquote Indian Act of 1871. Now, how does Canada not ever address any of these problems? Well, we have the negative comparison with the United States that basically means that we never actually do anything. Anytime we talk about how bad things are, like how our healthcare is inadequate, how indigenous people are being mistreated, how there's rampant racism all over the country, people will just uh, dismiss it saying, well, it's not as bad as the United States, which is like hardly a high bar to hit, but okay. And so we don't need to do anything to make anything better. And this confrontation with the Wet'suwet'en tribe in BC is an example of all these three things I hate about Canada just coming together. It's a natural gas pipeline being built through their territory. It shows overtly the fake wokeness of Justin Trudeau because every time he gets confronted about it, he says, yeah, things are bad for indigenous people. Also, we're building this pipeline and there's nothing you can do about it, which naturally dovetails into number three, the ongoing colonialism, where the will of the traditional government of the Wet'suwet'en people and the Wet'suwet'en people who protested and the legal claim that they have over their sovereign territory, they are a nation within the country. All of that being sidelined to make money for capital. This video is making me sound a lot like Mexi, uh, but not nearly as uh, well-spoken and intelligent. So yeah, Canadians need to stop this. We need to support the Wet'suwet'en people. One thing that makes me happy is that this story is not getting buried that it is getting national attention and that protests f in sympathy with the Wet'suwet'en people are getting national press, national attention and drowning out the oil pipeline, yellow jacket movement over um, 
are getting overwhelmed, which is nice. Is that going to result in any actual change? Well, this might be the year they can do it. It is an election year. Unfortunately, the NDP is shooting itself in the foot right now with its uh, lackluster leader, Jagmeet Singh. Seriously, guys, you had Nikki Ashton. Why? Why did you choose this person? And so uh, I imagine Justin Trudeau can tack as far right as he wants because what are you gonna do, vote for the NDP? And I guess the conclusion I just have to say to everybody who's not Canadian watching this video, first of all, congratulations on getting this far into a video that it looks like I've been recording for 29 minutes. I imagine it's not gonna be close that long for you guys. But yeah, don't look up to us. We are not a positive example. Canada has problems like every other country does. Ours are particularly egregious in some areas that we really, really need to address. All right, super depressing video, good. Still on brand, got it. Until, until my cat keeps interrupting the shot. Anyways, until next time, friends.